Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's JPR back with a review of the 21st Pokemon movie, The Power of Us. Before I get too far in, I want to say that since myself and many other Pokemon anime content creators have been experiencing a lot of copyright issues lately when discussing the anime, I'm going to be on the super safe side for this video and not show any screenshots, footage, or even music from the movie. Also worth noting, I'll be keeping spoilers to a minimum, so if you just want to tab out and listen to my beautiful voice, then go ahead and do so. Also, a special shout out to my friend on Twitter, at Mizuki Cruz, who was able to take me to the Pokemon movie when my other rides bailed out, so uh, thanks to him, I was able to see the movie and actually do this review, so uh, go give him a follow if you can. Anyway, this movie is not your average Pokemon movie, not in the slightest, and that's clear right from the beginning. From start to finish, it's shown that characters are at the forefront of this movie, not flashy, legendary Pokemon or battles. And honestly, that's a very refreshing change of pace. In the more recent Pokemon movies, it feels like the characters and story usually get the shaft in favor of just having two legendary walking advertisements butt heads for a few minutes. And although I think it's a really positive change for a more mature, movie audiences, this movie may not be as entertaining for your average younger viewer. There's a lot of dialogue, a lot of character building, and really only two major battles that come to mind, and I'd say that both of them maybe last less than a minute. That's not to undermine the action scenes in this movie, but we'll come back to that later in the art and animation segment. For now, let's discuss the characters and plot. Every character in this movie feels like a genuine, real person, despite living in a Pokemon world. And each of them meet and get to know each other in these very believable human ways. Every character also possesses their own unique flaw that the plot of the movie forces them to overcome individually. And the neat thing is that some of the Pokemon that they meet and catch also share some of those same flaws and help those characters out along the way. Like how Callahan's Sudowoodo is the imitation Pokemon. It's not a true tree, it's a rock. Like how Callahan struggles with telling people the truth. Risa is a runner who is scared of running after being injured, but her injured Eevee shows her how to have courage again. It's little things like that that I really appreciate in this movie. It doesn't feel like a company made this movie to promote a new Pokemon game. It feels like a movie produced by someone who just wants to tell a good story. Every character is fleshed out properly, somehow. Don't ask me how they managed to do it with less than two hours with like six or seven main characters, but they managed to pull it off. The only character that doesn't feel important or fleshed out, funnily enough, is Ash Ketchum. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Ash in this movie. He's far more likable than he usually is, and he plays a big role in motivating all the other main characters. It's just that when they're all standing together, you see six very realistic people and then a generic anime protagonist. Ash is basically just an anime character in this movie. Again, not a bad thing, he just pales in comparison to the others. Team Rocket and Zeraora also get very special shoutouts. Team Rocket actually plays a pretty large role in this movie, unlike in I Choose You and most other Pokemon movies where they're usually just reduced to either comic relief or mere cameos. And Zeraora, I'm impressed. This is the first time in a while that a mythical Pokemon felt like a real addition to the story rather than just blatant advertising. That was my biggest complaint with I Choose You, is that Marchetto just felt very forced and unnatural in the story that movie was trying to tell, and as a result, it just ended up ruining the third act. Zeraora does not do that, though. And neither does Lugia. Yes, Lugia only appears at the end of this movie for a few seconds, similar to how Arceus did at the end of the Hoopa movie, but unlike the dumpster fire of a movie, Lugia's appearance actually felt earned. The entire movie built up to it, unlike Arceus where he just kind of appears at the end because the movie needed him to. The plot also flows very nicely for the most part. There's a slight drag towards the middle of the movie, especially when the big crisis finally breaks out because they just kind of stand around and discuss their plan for like five minutes. It's also worth noting that this movie is very funny, especially in the beginning, probably the funniest Pokemon movie overall. And because of the good character building and the comedy, this actually feels like a Sun and Moon movie, even if it's not canonically in the Sun and Moon series. Like this whole thing could have easily happened on Mele Mele Island with Ash and all his classmates from the anime, and it would have been really similar. Anyway, very solid writing, very solid characters. I have to give plot and characters a 9 out of 10. Moving on to the next topic, art and animation. I'll just go ahead and say it, the movie is gorgeous. This art style really, really works. It's incredibly satisfying and incredibly detailed. 
Every character is very well designed. The few fight scenes that I mentioned are incredible, especially Pikachu versus Zero Aura at the end. My only gripe is that I wish that battle had lasted a little bit longer just so we could have seen what more this beautiful animation was capable of. The backgrounds are also very well drawn in this movie. The only distracting thing is that a lot of CGI is used for the background Pokemon on humans. There was this one Vulpix that I saw walking around the background maybe about three times in the movie, and all three times I saw it, I thought to myself, wow, that Vulpix model looks like it was ripped straight out of the 3DS games. Just don't look too closely in any crowd shots and keep your attention on the foreground and everything you see will hopefully be beautiful. I'm giving art and animation an 8.5 out of 10. It's a very pleasing movie just to look at. I only wish they had pushed the envelope a little bit further. And finally, the music and dubbing category. This was the first Pokemon movie since 2013 to keep Shinji Miyazaki's original soundtrack and not replace it with a crappy, lifeless dub soundtrack, which was the reason why you saw me do the Fortnite dance earlier. Sorry for ruining your evening with that, by the way. The soundtrack is really good. There is not only a lot of beautiful, emotional music, but there's also some real bangers. Pikachu vs. Zero Aura's theme in particular was straight fire, and also sprinkled throughout the soundtrack were a few themes from the Johto anime, such as the rival battle theme and the gold and silver title screen, since this movie is a very Johto heavy movie. And I can't lie, anytime I hear the music from the games in the anime, I just get this gigantic grin on my face. I can't help it. The soundtrack really brings a lot of these scenes to life, and I am so incredibly thankful that they did not do another dub soundtrack. The voice acting was also incredibly solid, perhaps TPCI's best effort ever. But my only gripe was that Risa sounded exactly like Serena, and that took me out of the immersion a bit. Not the voice actress's fault, I think she's very talented, I just wish they had found something a little bit different. The script for this movie is also very solid. Most Pokemon movies usually have this very cringy sounding script with a lot of unnatural dialogue put in it, but this dub script actually felt like something very faithful. There were no cheesy or cringy lines, and I really appreciate that almost as much as I appreciate them keeping the original music. It's no secret that I have not been a fan of the Pokemon Company's dubbing for the last few years, but they really knocked my socks off with this one. I would be hard pressed to not give dubbing and music a 10 out of 10. So for my overall thoughts, this movie deserves nothing less than a 9.5 out of 10. Again, I know this won't be everyone's favorite movie. Like I said, expect the younger fans to not like this one as much. It's not nearly as exciting or action-heavy as past films, but as someone who admires good storytelling, good character building, good animation, and good music, this movie doesn't miss a beat. At the very least, it's a top three Pokemon movie. I won't make a bold statement and say it's the definitive best Pokemon movie, because you never know some age better than others, but this one is definitely in contention. There are only two days left to see Pokemon the movie The Power of Us in theaters, so make sure you do just that. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to see more. I'll see you guys next time.